Welcome back to our series Launchpad, a place where you can come to figure out your future study and career path and learn a little bit more about yourself. I hope you all joined us for our first episode of the series where we looked at assessing ourselves internally in terms of interests, experiences, skills, personality and values. Now that we've looked inside, it's time to look outside. This episode is called Audit and it's all about understanding your external environment to see how we fit in as individuals. If you haven't seen our first episode, I highly recommend you go back and watch it because after you understand yourself, you'll be able to understand your external environment so much better. So let's dive right in. Why is it so important to understand the external environment and how do we fit in or break loose? What's really out there in this rapidly changing world? These are the sorts of questions that we are going to be answering today. And if you have any more, feel free to leave them in the comment section. We need to know what exists out there and what is right for us. This all starts with knowing ourselves. And I'm sure you all have a better understanding of that after watching our first episode. There are endless opportunities out there when we look at study paths and careers. There's a myriad of options that we have to choose from. IT just doesn't involve being good at technology and computers anymore. Within the IT field, you can choose to study hundreds of different specializations, including computer science, big data, artificial intelligence, the list goes on. So imagine being in a supermarket to buy water. I mean, how many different types of water can there be? But there are. Imagine staring at all your different options and trying to figure out which one is the best for you. That's kind of what it's like these days when it comes to choosing your study path, university, and eventually your career. These choices are part of a step-by-step -step process, which I will take you through today so that you are well informed to make the right decisions. We will take a look at countries, courses, and universities under a theme of changes, adaptations and opportunities. COVID-19 is going to leave a lasting impression on each of our individual lives, as well as globally. I think it's also going to remain as one of our most significant examples when we want to unpack our theme of changes, adaptations and opportunities. We always have a choice. And when we are presented with a challenge such as COVID-19, we can choose to tackle it head on or make the necessary changes, adapt in the right way, and find the right opportunities. That meant that a lot of our students at StudyCo started online classes right here in Oman with Australian universities. They decided that COVID-19 was not going to stand in their way. They changed. They adapted to the new form of learning. Let's zoom in closer to realize why changes, adaptations, and opportunities is such an important theme when we are analyzing our external environment. So, how can we look at the world to understand what exists and how we are placed within that? How do we approach each situation? Well, I have a three-step guide for students to figure out this for themselves when it comes to study paths and career. Number one is changes. What are the changes? Well, changes can come in many different forms. Changing grades, moving from primary school to high school, moving from high school to university and eventually having a career. Some of the changes in the current situation include working from home, online classes, staying at home a little more than usual, and potentially facing some tough times in various aspects of our lives. I do hope though that one of the changes we are consciously making is to be more tolerant and also appreciative of the society in which we live. One of the biggest changes in my life was when I graduated from my bachelor's degree and started my master's. The very first class of my master's degree, I still remember I felt like I had been thrown into the middle of the ocean and told to swim back to shore. I, I did not imagine that it would be such a big step, especially because I was at the same university. I never would have thought that this transition, this, this change, would have been harder than the change from school to my bachelor's degree. Change is unexpected. That's why it can sometimes be a little bit tricky. So the first step for you is to identify the big and small changes in your life, because once you do, you'll know how to adapt. So yes, 
The next step in the process of understanding our place in the external environment is adaptation. How can we adapt to be successful in this world? Well, let's go back to my first example of my first class in my master's degree. It was called International Relations Theory. And the entire class, I sat there watching, watching these words being thrown around and I'd never heard of them before and watching my classmates debate topics that I didn't feel confident enough to speak about because I had never studied them before. But I knew that if I wanted to be successful, if I wanted to achieve something here, I would have to adapt. That meant exploring the territory outside my comfort zone. Luckily, this is something that my past experiences had equipped me to do. I started asking questions, booking one-on-one -on -one consultations with my professors and even did an exchange program at Cambridge for the summer semester. Two years of a master's degree later, I was a completely different person for the simple reason that I learnt to adapt. How? Well, this goes back to our first episode where we assess ourselves internally. Understand who we are what we want to achieve based on the changes in our life, and adapt. That is potentially easier said than done, but it's always possible. So for example, aren't we relying a lot more on technology now than ever before? So how many of you have actually heard of Zoom before the COVID-19 pandemic? How many of you can actually live without it now? We've adapted because of change. I hope that we are also realizing that education and acquiring knowledge is becoming increasingly important if we want to create adaptability within ourselves. Because the more adaptable we are in a situation, the more opportunities we will see, the more opportunities we can grab. So that brings us to our third and most important step as to how to approach each situation in our lives by understanding the external environment our opportunities. What are they? Well, this depends a lot on the situation and the context. I know you are probably all a little bit tired of hearing the negative sides of COVID-19, so I want to focus on the positive. The opportunities. Globally, the world has been hit hard. More than 1.2 billion students and youth have been affected by school and university closures. But New changes always create space for people to harness new opportunities to fill that gap. Early last year, UNESCO launched the Global Education Coalition, in which the goal is to help all countries implement innovative solutions to provide education remotely. Now, UNESCO is aiming for universal access so that even the most disadvantaged countries have the same resources as a developed country for their growing population. Because at the end of the day, the building blocks of every single nation is its investment in its children and in its education. Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Zoom and KPMG have joined this coalition along with the UN's many different branches. Of course, this example is quite large scale, but it gives us a good idea of how personally we can create opportunities for ourselves and harness them at any stage of our lives. When we look at education, study paths, careers, education has been a lot more accessible and in many cases, also a lot more affordable. You would be amazed to see how many opportunities are actually out there. So I want you to think about this three-step approach as we start to explore the countries, courses and universities available for your future study and career paths. I want you to identify the changes see how you can adapt and find the opportunities. You will then be able to see how you fit in to the whole mix because it can get pretty jumbled up at times. The one constant thing in our lives is change. So let's adapt and create those opportunities for ourselves. Countries. So when we think about what to study after school or what to study later on in our lives, I think rather than the actual course, most people living in the Middle East think about the country. So let's look at some examples. Let's start with Australia. Of course, I'm gonna start here because I can be a little bit biased. Being born and brought up there, I'm allowed. So Australia is one of the world leaders in all forms of education, including its universities. 
Now, you can find all of this information online, so I'm just going to tell you what you are going to love about studying in a few countries. In Australia, the standard of living and lifestyle is second to none. Secondly, the food is amazing, and your professors are sometimes famous. In the UK, it's historic, it's beautiful. Harrods is a store that no one should have to live without and you might be able to sneak in a game or two of the English Premier League if you're into football. For the US, Christmas is amazing. Yes, it is like all those movies on Netflix. And it's a huge country to explore, so you may as well get started with your university education. Canada is cold for sure, but again, a great place to live. And the co-op programs offered by the universities mean that you are guaranteed work placements in your field while you study. A great advantage. Now, in European countries, there are some great affordable degrees, but you do have to learn the language sometimes. And Asian countries like Singapore and Malaysia also have really affordable degrees, but with international campuses from Australia, the UK and many other places. So you will get the world-class education you are looking for with all the perks and the international degree at the end. Similarly, the UAE has these same perks and it's the closest to home you can get with an education at a budget-friendly price. You would actually be surprised as to what you can find. So how can you actually decide which country is right for you? Well, that depends on a range of factors, including proximity, your budget, the type of experience you want to have, and most importantly, what you want to study. That takes us right into our next section. But before I get there, I want to highlight the importance of cross-cultural communication, assimilation and adaptability. No matter where you end up or what you choose to study, it's all about how you jump into the society that you are living in and harnessing all those opportunities around you. It's no fun to study in Germany without learning the language because you will miss out on so many of the local experiences. Similarly, it's no fun studying in Melbourne, Australia and not trying out any of the brunch places or coffee shops. Trust me, you will know when you get there. Now, let's jump right into a snapshot of all the courses and study options that are available out there. While you're considering your country, you are definitely thinking about what you want to study. There are so many possibilities these days. If we look at the traditional fields of study, we will come across engineering, law, business, medicine. You get the idea. We all know it's out there. But what about those up and coming fields? the ones that you are more likely to get a job with once you graduate university. I think it's these courses that are important to learn about so you have all the information in one place and can make an informed decision. So let's look at a few. Some of these professions, the ones that we are also going to explore in more detail in the later episodes of our Launchpad series. So the first area I would like to bring up is IT. There are many up and coming fields within the IT sector. Some of the ones we are going to explore in coming episodes are artificial intelligence specialists, game designers, and business systems analysts. Even though they are all within the overarching field of IT, they are such different professions. We are becoming increasingly reliant on technology day by day, year on year, you must feel it, you can see it. Studying computer science, software engineering, cybersecurity, and the list goes on really, you will position yourself in a great strategic location so that whilst you are studying at university, you will have a variety of jobs that you will be able to work towards even in this changing labor market. So the second area of study I will quickly touch on is renewable energy. In Oman itself, as part of Vision 2040, the government is diversifying away from oil and looking at other sectors of development and forms of energy. Solar, wind, geothermal, and studying about sustainable and renewable energy will definitely give you a leg up when you're looking at your future career. The final area of study that's important to talk about is marketing and in particular, digital marketing. So how much of the time do you buy something or avail a service after you've seen it on social media? How many of you open Instagram every single day? 
Social media is just a small part of what a digital marketing specialist does, but it's an important one. Online is the new way to advertise. Google is one of the only tools we use to actually search for things. Studying digital marketing is going to be the fastest changing course you've probably ever studied, but also a profession that's increasing in demand daily. Some other great fields to be a part of in the next decade or so that deserve a mention, but we don't really have the time to talk about include nurses, psychologists, financial analysts, and software developers. So everything I mentioned above can be studied as a diploma, bachelor's, or master's level, which will give you the appropriate footing to land the kind of job that you are looking for. But if you're already studying something else or already working and you wanna upskill just a little bit, you can also study everything that I've just described plus more as an online short course. You can even study English online, not just as a language, but also for a variety of professions. And all of these courses can range from a few hours to a few months. I know I've probably bombarded you with all this course information in the last few minutes, and now you're wondering, how are you going to pick the right course for you? Well, sometimes this does happen naturally by the process of elimination, or you really have to sit down and think about it. The study path you choose is highly dependent on your skills, interest, personality, and values. So I would highly recommend that you go back and watch our first episode if you haven't already to identify these. If you have seen it, then think about everything you learned about yourself. Aside from all of this, I, I hope that you choose to do something you love, even if it's a little bit left field, because then you'll be happy. You work even harder and you'll end up being a lot more successful. It's a great journey to be on. Universities. Now that we've spoken about countries and courses, I want to turn your attention to the final stage of picking your study path and future career. That's right, it's time to talk universities. Why is it important to pick a good university? Well, it's not just important to pick a good university, it's important to pick the right university for you. What do I mean by this? Well, I guess this all comes back to who you are, your grades, your interests, your skills, and what you want to study, as well as the country that you want to study in. Here's a quick step-by-step -step approach so that you are able to pick a university based on what's right just for you. Number one, narrow down your list of countries to just one or at the most two. Number two, Decide your area of study based on everything we've discussed in this episode and the last, and think about if you're going to study a diploma, bachelor's, or master's. Number three, narrow this down even further to a specific course name or title. Number four, look at your predicted grades at school or university and figure out what kind of ranking you are looking for at, for your universities. Are you going all the way to the top? or would you like something in the middle to suit yourself a little bit better? Number five, figure out your budget for tuition fees and living expenses. As much as I don't like to put a price tag on education because it all just seems worth it to me, I want to give you a practical approach and this is it. So I've definitely made this process sound a lot easier than it actually is, which is why I have one last step that will guarantee that you pick the right university for you. Come to StudyCo. You don't have to do this alone because this is what we do every single day. We have expert counselors and consultants that help students achieve their dreams. And because we believe that it's such an important part of the process, we don't charge a thing because we're happy to help. So I hope that I've been able to take away some of the stress that all you students and parents might be having out there when it comes to picking the right study path and career. And remember, always stay true to yourself and do what you love. Changes are everywhere and they're never going to stop coming at you. When you adapt to these, you will automatically see the right opportunities for you. I want to leave you with one thought that I hope stays with you after today. Say yes. Be willing to do things. Be willing to do all the things. 
Ambition is everything in today's world. After I reached high school and started university, I started saying yes to things because I was old enough to make my own decisions. Saying yes made me more ambitious and that created a whole range of new opportunities. At the start, it's going to be hard because you are going to do so many things you haven't before, but it's going to add to who you become, which is going to make you a lot more employable in future. Say yes a little more. See what happens. Could be fun.